Okay, y'all, we are trying out another setup. Please let me know what you think of this one down below. I am currently just sitting on my floor in front of my big living room window. Um, you will probably see me adjust and get comfortable throughout Welcome the Welcome back to my channel. My name is Serenity, if you're new here, and this is Homemaking in Heels, where I love to talk about all things homemaking, as the name suggests, biblical wifehood, femininity, just all of that good stuff. So please do go ahead and grab yourself something lovely to drink. I recommend a seltzer water today. I feel like that's gonna be my drink of choice, and let's get into it. today's video, I wanted to talk with you guys about mental health and how I maintain my mental health, how I cultivate my mental health. So if you see me looking down, it's because of course I have my notes. I have just a few written down tips. Let me see, how many do I have? Five? Five. <laughs> I have five tips here on how to cultivate and maintain your mental health. So my first one is affirmations. Now, this is one that is relatively new for me. I have not always practiced affirmations, but I decided that this was the year that I really wanted to conquer some of my, I guess you could say more consistent insecurities that come up in terms of my mental health. So one of the ways I did that was pinpointed my main triggers in terms of what are the things that really send me into a tailspin in terms of mental health? And then I wrote out affirmations for every single week regarding that. So as I go through my planner, here's a good example. <laughs> so as you can see here, I have my affirmations written at the top. This one says, you have nothing to prove, you have no rival, you are beautifully rare. And I think that that's one that probably most women can relate to. We all kind of fall into comparison. But so what I've done is I've picked out different informations that as I go through each week, I have one that I will repeat to myself every time I see it throughout that week. And then the next week it'll change. But I have found that that has really helped me just really target those areas where I am most vulnerable and speak words of life into those areas rather than needing that external validation, giving it to myself. Now for point number two, my second tip would be to schedule a worry time. Now this was actually a tip that I learned from Dr. Caroline Leaf, I'll link her Instagram down below, but she actually posted on her Instagram about scheduling a worry time, which is five minutes a day when you journal and process with the Lord, the areas that are kind of nagging at you throughout the day. So the way that I like to think about that is at least down in the South, we have no CMs, which which are the little mosquitoes that you can't see, but they just get you. They just kind of nag and you don't always feel it, but then you see it later on. You see all the little bumps and they're the worst. <laughs> and I feel like we all have certain worries that are the same thing. They're like our little no see -em worries where as you're washing dishes, you know, you might be thinking about what's for dinner, but then in the back of your mind over here, you also have this nagging worry. And so this way, what she says is if you schedule a five minute time, and I have found this to be true in my own life, I schedule a five minute time per day to go through those worries, see what's there, just kind of excavate it, leave it on the paper, talk to the Lord about it. And then throughout the day, when worries come up, I try to remind myself, I'll deal with that tomorrow in my five minute worry time. Because what that does is you are acknowledging the worry that's nagging at you, right? So in your journal, you are acknowledging it. You're not just trying to brush it away. But at the same time, you're not allowing it to rule your day because you're addressing it in those five minutes. And then when those five minutes are over, when you are past your worry time, when now, you know, worry time's over and you're just doing your dishes, when it comes up, you say, I'll deal with that later. And you can say so knowing that you will actually deal with it later. Let's recap. The first tip was to go ahead and write affirmations specifically about your target areas of insecurity and put them somewhere where you can see them and repeat them every day. The second tip was to schedule a worry time so that those worries don't overtake your day, but rather you deal with them within those five minutes. And then my third tip would be to move your body. Now, I've talked about this before. I love the Legally Blonde quote, happy people don't kill their husbands, <laughs> exercising releases endorphins. You know, we all know it's true, but we don't all actually take the time to practice it. And I'm definitely guilty of this, but I have definitely found that on the days when I'm more deliberate to just move my body, my mode right now has been, I absolutely love the Apple Fitness Plus. I love all their dance workouts. That's my favorite, so I try and do that. Every day when it works, in reality, it usually comes out to being about 
three or four days a week. I would like it to be five, but let's be real, it's three or four. You know, we all know that it releases those endorphins, which help fight the cortisol in our body. But in addition to that, I find that there's something really grounding in just feeling what your body is experiencing at that moment. That deliberate mindfulness of like, even right now, okay, I'm sitting down. I can feel the cold tile beneath my ankles. I can feel that my shoulders have been a little bit uptight. Just lately I've got some cares and so I can feel my shoulders are, are bearing that. My arms are a little bit tense. I'm just gonna release that. And this is actually something that we do a lot with my students and my little homemaking side hustle where we try to every day have a move break where they wiggle and we just release the jitters. And I think that as adults, we need that too, to just release our jitters. There is something so important about being present with yourself while you're exercising, while you're moving, seeing what you're feeling and just really grounding and not getting stuck in our heads and in all the nebulous thoughts that can really overtake us. Okay, so that was point number three was exercise. So now point number four would be to have a hobby that is just yours. And again, this is something I've talked about before. This is something I'm a massive proponent of, of having hobbies that are yours. This isn't something that you necessarily do with the whole family. This isn't something that is necessarily uber productive. It's just something for you. Now, lately, one that I've actually been enjoying is picking up the banjo. I have been learning to play the banjo and, you know, we've had one for years. I just kind of decided to start picking it up and learning it through some guy on YouTube. And it's surprised me the degree to which it has blessed my day. Just sitting there strumming my banjo, picking at my banjo and enjoying this sound that I know that not everybody loves. Like I know that the banjo is not something I'm exactly going to be able to like pick up with everybody and just play my banjo while they're all playing like Oasis, right? It's not necessarily gonna work, but it is me. Like there is that element of now that I live, you know, a million miles away from where I was raised, it feels like it's not actually, but maintaining my sense of identity and authenticity with just a little bit of bluegrass that I get to make, you know, I get to make that music while I'm out here in Southern California, as opposed to the swamp lands of Florida. It's small, but it's mine and I enjoy it. So that is tip number four. I will actually link below my whole video that I have about the importance of hobbies and why I find it to be so vital. But that is still tip number four of ways to just maintain your mental health. All right, and my final tip, tip number five, would have to be quiet time. I cannot stress this one enough. Forget the rest, like leave all the rest behind. If you can only take one, take quiet time. You need that time with just you, Jesus, your Bible. You need it. You need it. It's so good for the soul. I can't tell you how many times a day I will be worrying and I keep the little widget, I guess is what it's called with the new updates. I keep the little widget of the Bible apps daily verse. I keep it on my phone. When I am feeling just antsy about something, I can swipe and just read that verse. And it's always calming to my soul. We were created to be in contact with our creator. And this is how we do it is through reading his word is through times of prayer. For me, an integral part of that is journaling. I need to get those thoughts out. I am such an external processor. I need to do that. And so, like I said, if you take only one thing from this, take that one. Prioritize quiet time. I don't care if you are a super busy mother and it is while you are, you know, on the toilet. And the one thing you can do is just swipe and read that one daily verse girl do it like find a way if it is just while you're falling asleep having the bible be spoken over you they have a lot of really great sleep apps that read scripture to help you sleep whatever it is whatever works for you find it and just embrace it and make it part of your daily routine right. that is it for today thank you very much for watching this video I will go ahead and show you my daily outfit of the day as I do with all of these videos my little feminine dress outfit. Okay, so this is today's dresses only outfit of the day. I'm just wearing, actually this is all from Amazon. So I got this maxi dress, which I am obsessed with. Oh, there we go. It has these awesome little pockets. I got it from Amazon, I will link it down below. And then I also got this little waist belt that I love. I feel like it just adds a little something something to this dress. So yeah, that is today's dresses only outfits of the day. I am 
completely barefoot, <laughs> but I like that this dress covers that because I don't really plan on going anywhere today. Today I'm just at home. It's a super comfy, easy dress, but I love that because it's a dress, it feels more elevated than just being, you know, sweatpants, but it also feels like I'm just wearing sweatpants. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what you think of the setup, what you think of my current background, letting you see a little bit more of my house in these videos. I would love to hear. Please sound off in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you in my next video.